Welcome back to our continued uh, project with the Raspberry Pi Pico as a temperature probe and display. So we've created a fully functional Raspberry Pi uh, Pico project with MicroPython. So now from here, let's see if we can take that and make a uh, C++ compiled version using the same uh, circuitry. Now I'm going to be using a new Raspberry Pi Pico as the other one is still um, having um, doing other tests on it. So this is on a breadboard. I did not um, solder in the pin header on this one uh, just yet so it's on a breadboard with just jumper wires so uh, you'll see why that will matter uh, later so what we're going to do is on the Raspberry Pi Pico like we did with the MicroPython version is that we have the DSi uh, 1820 and we have it connected to GP16 over here on pin 1. That's going to be the data wire. There is also a 4.7K resistor going between uh, GP16 and the power rail of the uh, breadboard, which is connected to the 3.3 uh, volt out on pin 36. The power connection from the uh, temperature probe will go to that same pin. And uh, currently I have the ground pin going to pin 18, but it can go to uh, any of the other grounds. So that's how that is uh, connected. And let's take a look at the code. This was, um, the initial code was generated using the um, project generator. Uh, I'll link a, put a link to that uh, video so you can see how to install and run the project generator. And I am using C++ and not C for this. Um, the reason being that the, uh, uh, we'll be using classes for, uh, part of it and uh, I'm also using the USB function so we can use the display monitor um, that function once we get further in the project may not be needed but we'll leave that on so let's go ahead and look at the code that we have I'm doing this all in one file just to make it easier um, so the four header files that we um, include are the CS, uh, STDIO, standard out, the Pico standard library, the hardware GPIO library, and this is um, the module Pico one wire API. And this is where I uh, found that uh, API and downloaded and the instructions are on their website. If anyone would like a separate video on that, please let me know and I will uh, uh, show that. Um, I'm from that API and that API creates or has classes in it and that's the classes that we need to use and I'm uh, declaring and defining two functions uh, one for Celsius one for Fahrenheit it uses this uh, data type which is defined in that one wire dot H for the address of the one wire and that is the uh, only argument for 
the function. So essentially, the, the function is, or the argument is a object. And that's something I'm, I generally do, but in this case, it seems to be the easiest way to use this. And that is, the object is this one wire, and then it's a single device, read ROM, and then the address. So let me correct what I said earlier. There are two arguments. One is the address, and the other is the object, the one wire. I apologize for misspeaking. So then it takes that address, and then it has the one wire convert temp. And it takes uh, this address and then true and false. I'll get to that later, most likely. I just essentially just copied it from their, uh, from this uh, example on the website. So I, I'll let you know in the comments, most likely, what that refers to so we don't break the continuity of the video at this point. Um, sleeps for a thousand milliseconds, one uh, second. I still need to do power management on that because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that it does try to put it into a low power mode from the documentation I read. That will be a later video once we start connecting other things. And then it's going to return the temperature that was done with the convert temp from that address. And the Fahrenheit is the same uh, function, except for it converts it to uh, Fahrenheit. Now, a word before we get any further. If this function cannot communicate with the temperature probe, it will re re give a zero as the value, unlike with MicroPython, which would cause the um, script to fail at that point. So we, this gives a little bit more um, stability to it. So if, I, um, if you saw my uh, short video of when I brought it to um, the park, I had to reset it several times, mainly because the wiring came loose and it just, stopped working and I had to reset it. So this will continue going and you'll actually see a value of zero, uh, ne negative 176 is another value that will come up um, from the Celsius version. And then because of the way it converts, you take zero, you times it by 1.8 and you add 32, the uh, result you'll get is 32. So now we in, we go into the, the main function. Uh, we initialize standard out or standard in and standard out. We uh, initialize the instance of this class one wire and we feed it the uh, GPIO pin. So we're using GPIO 16, which is on 21. As you can see here, GPIO 16 is on pin 21. And then we uh, initialize it. And we set the address using that uh, special uh, type, the ROM address underscore T. And then we run a uh, endless loop and it's going to get the temperature, format it and run the temp C with that address and the one wire uh, object. As you can see, it's the lowercase. So it's the, the actual object and not the class. And then we do the same thing with Fahrenheit using the get temp f function. And this is thrown in when you use the 
uh, project generator. I just left it here and just put down that that should never run because there is no mechanism currently for this loop to end. Um, and then we return zero, which it should never get to that point again, and close out the file. So we'll close that out. We will go to the build directory and let's make a clean version. So we'll make clean and then we will hit make. It's going to run through this uh, the make process. Once you do this once, it will only take a few seconds anytime you uh, modify the code. I just wanted to show this going through uh, one way, one version, or one instance of it fully going all the way through. There are these two warnings um, that are coming from the onewire.h, the no discard warning. Um, it's a C++ error that I looked into. It didn't seem to be any main issue with it so I am just leaving it there it has something to do with having a constant as you can see so it's the code works I'm leaving it at that so now from here um, you can't just copy this file over like we did with uh, MicroPython we have to copy the f uh, file after holding down the boot select button and connecting the USB cable to the computer and releasing the boot uh, cable. That, that right here, the boot select button. So you disconnect the USB cable, hold down the boot select, and plug the USB cable in. So a word of advice here, this connector is on there well enough for a micro USB connector, but constantly unplugging it and plugging it back in, unplugging it, plugging it back in, will eventually weaken this connector. So what I've been using is I've been using a, a small um, a USB cable, a, a micro USB cable, and then I have an extension cable going to my Raspberry Pi that I've been coding on so that that connection up there where it connects to the extension cable is eventually going to be the weak point and that's a standard uh, a style USB connection so that is more durable than this micro USB cable okay so now we check to see where it mounted it mounted here on USB 0 so we copy the test.uf2 to media usb0 and then we just give it a moment to initialize i don't have anything lighting up any leds or anything to say that it initialized it doesn't do um like with the uh arduinos where it'll flash that it's uploading or compiling or anything like that so just give it a little time. So we're going to use uh, PicoCom. No relation to the Pico. It's just the name of the communication program. And we still use the same uh, TTY ACM0. On your computer, it will be different. You just need to make sure you know which uh, serial device you're using. And you can use any serial terminal. You can use screen. You can use... Um, a graphical uh, interface. I'm doing everything on this uh, command prompt, so I'm using PicoCom. So we're running it through, and you're going to see these. Uh, it's failing. It's giving that one minus, and that's because the wiring is not correct, or the wiring is not holding. So I have to physically put pressure on the wire to make sure it's making a good physical contact. And as you can see it, yeah, as I move 
Again, this is on a very precarious breadboard. So it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit in my office, uh, which is almost 27 degrees uh, Celsius. And I just released the wire so it's going to disconnect. And I have no escape, uh, the escape uh, for um, PicoCom uh, escapes me right now. So I just disconnect the wire. So, um, as you can see, the uh, simple program just running through um, to uh, get this uh, working with the one wire protocol. And if I was to do this with uh, MicroPython, it would have crashed the program. And if you have it on an independent system, that's not good if all of a sudden the LEDs just says the last temperature at red and it doesn't know that. So we could also add other things in to um, test to see if it's failing or anything like that. So we're, I'm going to continue the same process that I did with the MicroPython version of this. So um, the next... Uh, video will be reconnect uh redoing with the eight segment displays so i'm gonna actually do a new um uh breadboard and put the eight segment displays on there and i may have already um by the time this video comes out i may have already done the um uh perf board and uh, wire wrapped a and soldered a full uh, permanent board so I may use that we'll uh, we'll see if uh, I haven't done that uh, live stream I'm scheduling that for uh, August 17th I believe uh, I'll put the uh, information in the description prior to the uh to the live stream if anyone would like to see that if that has not happened if this is published after august 17th go uh take a look at that uh live stream and you can see me uh attempting to wire wrap that board hopefully i'm successful um so uh we'll continue on this go ahead and subscribe so you can uh Continue on this uh, journey and take a look at the uh, playlist that of uh, all these uh, videos. If there's anything that I was not clear on or that you want me to go into more depth, please go ahead and leave a comment so everybody can. If you have a question, chances are somebody else will too. And we can get that uh, content out there. Again, as always, thank you for watching, and you have a great day.